Hi, hello everyone, and thank you guys for tuning in today uh, for our, uh, our Facebook Live. Uh, we've got a minute or two before we're going to start, so um, wait for a few more people to join us. But um, thank you everyone for tuning in today. And uh, as always, you know, this is an interactive session, so uh, if you have anything to type uh, or comment on or questions, uh, please type it into the comment box and we'll uh, try to answer your questions as best as we can. Again, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm Dr. Victor Chow and this is Rustin Henry. We're still a minute or so away from two o'clock, which is our scheduled start time. Um, we're just going to make sure that we don't have any um, technical difficulties uh, in the next minute or so. But um, Mr. Henry has agreed to come on today um, and I'll introduce him a little later. I wish uh, I had uh, unfortunately didn't really publicize it because I didn't get a confirmation until quite late that he would be able to join us. But I am very happy that that he has. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, Russ, it looks like we'll get started. Okay, so all right. So mm -hmm. thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, Dr. Victor Chow with the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana. Uh, my official website is chowmd.com. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's Facebook Live. I've got a really special guest with me today. And for those of you that um, get medical marijuana in the um, in the uh, New Orleans area, you're probably familiar with this gentleman, or at least this dispensary. So this is Mr. Rustin Henry. He's with H&W Dispensary. Hi, how are you doing today? Thank you for coming on, and it's a pleasure to, to have you on. And I am really excited that um, you have come on today, because you are a real pioneer in this space, and I wanted to sort of pick your brain and get to hear some information from you and there's been some recent things that have happened and and I, I will talk about that a little later but anyway um i just want you to start with a little bit of background on you your pharmacy business i understand it's actually um a family affair so you know for those people that don't know if you want to um talk to me a little bit about that well h and w drugstore was started in 1963 by my father Sterling Henry, and he had a partner, Wesley G. Watkins, so Henry and Watkins, H and W. Uh, it was started in the Lower Ninth Ward, um, in the area that was flooded back in, you know, post Katrina. Katrina, Katrina flooded this area. But it was started in 63. Uh, Mr. Watkins passed away in 91. Um, my, my dad kept the name because it was a, it was, it was a stay with that community. Um, until 99 when he retired and I took it over. Mm -hmm. um, I had been working there prior to, so it wasn't just like I just stepped in. Right. Uh, I graduated from pharmacy school in 85, so I took it over in 99. So you worked there about 15 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Worked, work, 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 work hard <laughs> until that time. So then um, Katrina happened. We were displaced. The Lower Night War was one of the most hardest hit areas in New Orleans and actually it still hasn't come back. Most of, pretty much most of New Orleans is pretty much back, but the Lower Night Ward is still, you can see the scars yeah. from Katrina. Um, so we were out of business for a little while with post Katrina. Actually I was working as a pharmacy manager at Walmart and then we had an opportunity to come back. Um, we opened up our, we opened up, we reopened H&W Drugstore in 2011 in New Orleans East. And then actually another opportunity came aboard for us to open it up in a grocery store in 2013. So in, in Jefferson Parish, the West Bank of Jefferson Parish. So right now we had two, two facilities, one in New Orleans East, one in um, Marrero. And then when medical marijuana came on board, um, we took the bull by the horns and said, hey, why not us? What made you specifically interested in the medical marijuana? Because your two uh, pharmacies right now are just sort of general retail, retail pharmacies. Retail correct? Pharmacy, right. What, what was it that made you think, you know, hey, this is something that I'm curious about or I want to get involved in? I did a certain amount of research on it. Um, it was a new industry that was coming. It was an industry that proved it helps people. So... If it's coming to Louisiana, I looked at myself and said, why not us? 
we've, we've had a long history of uh, operating of pharmacies in um, the area. We're, we're pretty ingenious. We're pretty knowledgeable about a whole bunch of things. And I knew that our standards would be a high standard of uh, operation. So we, it just wasn't a business venture. Mm -hmm. Whereas pharmacists, our, our first and foremost uh, concerns is for patient care. And I didn't want that to get into the hands of somebody else who necessarily wasn't really concentrating on patient care and there's more the business aspect of it. Yeah, you're a small locally owned family owned business. You weren't looking for some big corporation to just, you know, come in and here's our New Orleans branch. You really want right. to take it. And I think later on we'll explain how recently you've really, you know, stuck to that. Um, so um, nobody gets really taught therapeutic marijuana or medical cannabis in pharmacy or medical school. So there was a learning curve, I imagine. Definitely, huh? definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, actually, when we see we were pursuing this, we took the initiative out on ourselves to do a little self-education. You know, some of, the, some of the states who have medical marijuana programs similar to ours. Like, we did some review of the Connecticut Mm -hmm. medical marijuana um, program, the Minnesota medical marijuana program. Actually, we visit some of those um, facilities yes. and got some insight in it. So, like I said, with H&W, when we, when we ventured into this, I knew that we were going to be up to, up to speed and we wanted to exceed the expectations and the knowledge base that we needed. And Rustin, I, I will tell you something I don't think I've mentioned, but every time I have a patient that goes to your facility, one of the things they always mention is the amount of counseling they get from your staff on how to take it and how to time it and all of that. And, and that to me, that's a credit for, you know, the, the training that you've put your staff together, because that's one of the things that patients always mention to them when they go to your facility is how much time the pharmacist spends in that counseling room, um, you know, going over things. So well, when we first came up with um, h and I wanted to care stand. I wanted to be a different type of experience. I wanted to be patient, sensitive and you, you have a new type of medication is out here not many people know about it and we want to take our time because if you go to some of these places they're trying to get you in and out in a hurry our whole focus is on patient care so we spend our time to make sure you know how to use this medication uh that you're comfortable with it. and anytime you have any questions in the future hey we're here for your disposal our goal is to make sure that you get the maximum benefit out of this therapy Great. Well, thank you, Rustin. So in case you're just now tuning in, uh, I'm Dr. Victor Chow um, with the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana, and I have Mr. Rustin Henry. He's with H&W Dispensary, which is the New Orleans area uh, dispensary that's been licensed by the state of Louisiana for medical marijuana. So thanks for tuning in, Lori. I appreciate it. And thanks for everyone else that's tuning in. I know a lot of you are tuning in for some updates regarding any news or updates we have with regards to medical marijuana. So I'll take a second to go over some of those. Um, we were recently, or this morning, Russ and I, uh, along with many other people, were at the uh, Louisiana Department of Agriculture stakeholders meeting. So this basically is a meeting where the growers and the regulatory bodies and um, basically um, we're all sort of in this big room together and come up on the agenda that some people um, have um, mentioned. So. You may or may not have heard, but recently there was a little bit of a confusion regarding um, treatment of chronic pain patients. Basically, some confusion as to, you know, if you were a chronic pain patient, could you take opioids and medical marijuana at the same time? Did you have to get both of those from the same doctor? And there, so there was apparently some confusion with some differing opinions and rules that were coming out from the medical board and things like that. Well, I can't update you that your concerns as patients have been understood by both me and the dispensaries and have been relayed to the medical board. Um, and so it does look like we're going to have uh, some resolution to that probably within the next month or two. So there's not this uncertainty and there's not this, you know, issue hanging over. Apparently what, what it's going to be is really sort of maintaining the status quo, um, which is basically, yes, you can be on medical marijuana and opioids at the same time. Yes, um, you can get opioids 
from one doctor and medical marijuana from another doctor, but both doctors have to sort of work together and you can't have more than one doctor for opioids and more than one doctor for medical marijuana. So apparently that's the way things are shaping out. You know, obviously we have to wait for the medical board to make a final judgment on that. And as always, I'll let you know on my Facebook page and in my newsletter, if you're a patient of mine, um, you know, exactly what's shaping out to be. But um, largely for the most part, you know, if you are a patient and you are legitimately trying to seek care for your chronic pain and you're going about it the right way you're seeing a pain management doctor and then your pain management doctor has referred you to see me for example then so far it looks like we'll we'll all be in the clear um, you know I think the only people that really have anything to worry about are people that were you know blatantly skirting the rules you know and doing really stuff that they shouldn't have done Rustin exactly. yeah uh, another issue that has come up and I think this issue is still in a little bit of debate is whether patients from out of state can actually come to Louisiana and participate in the medical marijuana program here, but I don't think it's very clear where that's going to go yet. Um, I personally don't see anyone that's out of state because I don't think the medical board has ruled that that's allowed. Rustin, do you check IDs or do you check um, Louisiana residency uh, on your patients? Yes, we do. But one of the big things is that if you have a patient that's out of state that comes to a physician and he's seen and he's recommended medical marijuana and get to one of her licensed facilities. If you leave state, technically it's illegal to transport medication across the state. And that's that's the gist of the whole thing. The legality of it is if a patient's in Mississippi, Texas, Alabama, if they take this medicine that they got legally and drew recommendation by a licensed physician and they bring it across state, we're not sure what the repercussions would be at that point. I think, Rustin, that's an excellent point um, because, you know, as a patient, let's say, you know, you live in Texas, but you happen to make it to Louisiana, see a doctor here in Louisiana, go to a Louisiana dispensary, get your medical marijuana. As soon as you cross state lines, you're back in Texas. You know, you would sort of have to operate under the laws of the state of Texas, exactly. not even mentioning the federal issues. One example I use really... Um, uh, that I use for my patients, and I think a lot of people tend to understand it, is basically think of it like um, uh, carrying a firearm. You know, to, 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 there's some states that allow you to open carry. There's some states that allow you to conceal carry. There's some states that don't let you even possess one at all. And just because, let's say, you have a concealed carry permit in Louisiana doesn't mean you can conceal carry in California. So, you know, you, you got to be careful. So exactly. I think, Rustin, you make a great point. Even if Louisiana allows it, you could still potentially be in legal, have legal or employment issues mm -hmm. in another state. So I think that's an excellent point. So if anyone's just tuning in, uh, thank you so much. I'm with Rustin Henry of H&W Dispensary. I'm Dr. Victor Chow with the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana. You can visit me at chowmd.com. As always, we try to make this session interactive. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, questions for me or Mr. Henry here, please type them in and if we can get to them, we'll address them. So just some nuts and bolts on your dispensary, uh, Rustin, just um, where is your location? I know in New Orleans, but what's the specific address and phone number if people want to contact you? Okay. We're with H&W Dispensary. We're Region 1 Dispensary of Medical Marijuana. Region 1 encompasses Orleans Parish, Jefferson Parish, Plaquemine Parish, and St. Bernard Parish. We're located in New Orleans at 1667, so 1667 Chapatulas Avenue, uh, right near the river, near the Mississippi River Bridge. Uh, our phone number is 504-301-2363. That's 504-301-2363. And our website is hwdispensary.com. That's hwdispensary.com. A lot of the questions you might have regarding H&W, regarding the medical marijuana program, we have them on our website. So this is a good resource to look at and find some of the information you might need. It's a beautiful facility. I've been there um, about a month or two ago, and I met uh, a lot of the staff. Q and Glenn are your main pharmacists right, there, right? Right, right. 
And so, you know, expect to, you know, be treated well. And we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, um, some of the products uh, a little bit later on. Um, and yes, it's, it's actually very easy to get to uh, literally right off the main highway. Yeah, right. And it is by the convention center in New Orleans. So, um, so pretty easy to get to, um, you know, um, most people have, you know, really uh, enjoyed this uh, location right. that you have. Right. Well, like I said, we moved from a Paris Avenue location to the Chapatulas. And you mentioned Q and Glenn. These are the most eager to learn, easy to, e eager to please and care about customers, patients you ever want to get. So that fits within our whole dynamics that we, we try to emphasize, that patient care. So at H&W, from the time you walk in, we're, we're all about your care, and we want to make sure that you get what you need to get your life back. Yeah, and for any of you that are used to the typical Walgreen experience where you are literally there sitting around for half an hour to an hour, and then you get, you know, a minute with the, this, uh, the pharmacist who looks like they'd rather be doing anything else than counseling you, and, and but, but, you know, seriously, I mean, I, I've seen patients that walk in, they're greeted very warmly, brought to the back fairly quickly, and, um, you know, they spend a lot of time in the back because that's time that they're spending right. with Q or Glenn right. to get their counseling and then, and then, and then you leave. So, um, so, so that's great. A um, couple of questions that people ask, you know, and again, I think it's always great to emphasize because, you know, I don't know if every dispensary has the same policy, but as far as, um, caregivers so do the patients themselves have to come pick it up or can they have someone pick it up from you and then another question is do you have to reside in the health district one to be able to go to your dispensary or are patients allowed to choose wherever dispensary they want to go great questions first of all um first one is that you can appoint a caregiver so you can have somebody pick up your medication for you because they are qualified as your caregiver you designate them a caregiver with us and they're, they're more than qualified to pick it up at that point. Second question is, uh, the Louisiana Medical Marijuana Program, you can pick your medication up at any dispensary in the state, wherever you choose to. So some people might work in New Orleans and live in Baton Rouge or vice versa. They might choose to pick it up one place where they work versus where they live at. So you have that option to pick it up where you choose to, and but you just have to notify your physician where you'd like the recommendation to be faxed over to. Just like any pharmacy, you know, you as a patient have the choice of, of where you go. Um, I guess we should also mention your hours of operation as well, so uh, no confusion as far right, as that. Right, right now we're, we're a Monday through Friday operation, Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Uh, we have plenty of parking in our new facility on Chapatulas. Um, it's a fantastic new place because like Dr. Chow said originally we were on another location in more of a residential area now we're in a we're close to the convention center close to the bridge and everything and you know we, we like it and it's 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 really really good because it it flows the flow is a little bit better and yeah. it's about patient flow so that we can I go back to the same thing you probably hear me say it a few times the redundancy is that uh it's about patient care yeah I actually never visited your initial facility because you guys weren't actually in there for very long. Um, but I saw this is nothing against the initial facility, but I, I like your facility now. It's great. Um, Kathy, we see your question about the newer methods of administration and Rustin and I will handle that in, uh, 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 in a little bit. So thank you for that. Just stay tuned with that. Um, I know you were heavily involved in Alafia, which is basically Alira's new over-the-counter CBD. I think they, they, they uh, sort of featured it at your store or you, were, right. you, you sort of were the first store to, to retail that. So how does that all work, you know, with patients? Well, fortunately, we were chosen to unveil their product at our store. So we weren't really involved a lot in it, but we were chosen. They, they wanted to unveil their product at a one of the nine, one, one of the nine dispensaries, and, and we were fortunate enough that they 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 chose us. So we made sure the experience was. We opened the doors to everything because they they're a top notch uh -huh. um, facility. So we opened the doors to them, and, and we were glad to um, work with them. How would a patient go about obtaining the Alafia CBD product? So they 
they wouldn't need a doctor's recommendation. Do they need a call ahead? And how, how would they? Yeah, just come over. Just come over to H&W. We have it available. You could get it. It has a, um, a significant medical benefit of it. It's not to the degree that the recommenda recommended um, mar medical marijuana is, but it does have a certain amount of medical benefit to it. So just for example, the CBD rich that we get in the medical marijuana program, I guess this product would be most um, reasonably compared to that. Yeah. So the CBD rich, for example, has um, 60 milligrams of THC per bottle, 1200 milligrams of CBD, whereas the Alafia um, uh, over the counter CBD, my understanding comes in either a thousand milligrams CBD or 500. Mm -hmm. And then they also have a full spectrum, which has less than 0.3% THC and then an isolate, which has right. none. So there are some differences right. there. One of the biggest things is that if anything else, there's a distinction between over the counter CBD and the medical marijuana CBD. Okay. Over the counter medical marijuana is derived from hemp, which means by nature it has less than 0.3% THC. So any, mer any, any CBD products that you get as over the counter, it's from hemp. In Louisiana, in the world, in the country, whatever you want to do, it has less than 0.3% THC. So a lot of times people will skirt those rules. They'll tell you, yeah, it has THC in it. Yes, it almost all, almost has a non-detectable -detect amount of THC, less than 0.3%. So not less than 0. Not less than 3, less than 0.3%. The, me the, the medical marijuana CBD that we have has a significant amount of THC in it. So and THC and CBD has a synergistic relationship to each other. So you need certain conditions the, the THC, even though it's not a whole lot to get you that euphoria, it has a certain amount of medical application in conjunction with the CBD. And again, we'll get into this a little bit later, but recently with the way you've priced your CBD rich, it's almost um, as cost effective, even though in my opinion, it's, it's you know, uh, a better product in terms of the uh, conditions that you can use it for, you know, competitive price-wise with the the uh, over-the-counter, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Dr. Victor Chow with the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana, and uh, this is uh, Mr. Rustin Henry with H&W Dispensary, which is the uh, medical marijuana dispensary for the New Orleans area. You can visit my uh, official website, which is chowmd.com, and Rustin, what was your dispensary's website again? HW Dispensary at no, I'm sorry, hwdispensary.com. I'm sorry, hwdispensary.com. HW okay, great. So, anyone that's tuning in a little bit about the clinic, real quick, um, you may or may not be aware if you're a current patient that we did recently change our hours and days of operation. So, currently, the my clinic, the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana, with me, Dr. Victor Chow. We are currently open now, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, from nine in the morning to four p.m. So that does change a little bit uh, of our hours. So just please be aware that we are currently now open Monday through Thursdays, nine a.m. to four p.m. And also, one of the changes that we made recently was um, for our um, current patients. You may in the past have been used to paying a um, fee whenever we did your refills, and people, a lot of people ask me about that. Well, you may or may not be aware, but in the olden days of the program, Rustin, you probably are aware, they were very restrictive on how they would allow us to give you the recommendations. We couldn't hand them to the patients, we couldn't fax them, we couldn't email them. Basically, someone from the clinic had to hand deliver them to the dispensary. Well, you can imagine how difficult that would have been for me as a doctor in Baton Rouge, having to hand deliver a recommendation to Hope Dispensary in Shreveport every single day for patients, you know, so, you know, we had to incorporate that into our cost structure, you know, and eventually they allowed us to physically mail them in, which again, you know, you still have to overnight packages at over 20 a buck, bucks a pop. So anyway, now that we have it sort of streamlined to where you can fax them, you know, we're getting rid of that monthly refill fee for our patients just because in truth, you know, we don't need that anymore because our costs not having to account for that 
you know, are much less than we, we initially anticipated. So we have gotten rid of the monthly refill fees for patients that are of ours that need to um, refill. And keep in mind, again, that's just our fees that we were charging at the clinic here. So for those of you that are just tuning in, um, Dr. Victor Chow here with um, Mr. Rustin Henry at H&W Dispenser. Got a quick question from Betsy here. And what strains of cannabis are used for the balanced product? So that's a great question. And Rustin, if you have something to add, I'm gonna try and answer it the best I can. So the, the products that currently are available all come from the LSU grower, which is, um, GB Sciences. Um, and when I've spoken with them, John Davis, many, many times to see if they're willing to release what kind of strains they're using, I always get basically a very kind no, this is proprietary. But we've been able to figure out some things, you know, Rustin and I just sort of on how patients are responding. So basically what they do is they, they do have these strains all in a cannabis sativa type of formulation. And they, apparently sort of custom blend uh, a couple things all together, just sort of what they figured, you know, their proprietary blend. Now remember the balance is 50, 50 percent CBD and 50 percent THC. THC. Correct, so correct, we correct. do know that, um, but it does appear that they sort of are allowed to just sort of custom blend whatever, you know, but in the end, it, for most people, it performs a little bit like what I would consider to be a hybrid, but veering a little bit on that sativa-ish edge. So um, so that's sort of what I tend to see for most of my patients. How, what are your thoughts, Russell? I, I, I agree with you 100% on that. There's been a lot of detective work because again, GB Sciences feels this is proprietary, um, you know, and, and but we do know that information which has been public released. So, all right, great. Um, Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Victor Chow. This is Mr. Rustin Henry with H&W Dispensary and your website, hwdispensary.com. Correct. And what's your phone number again, sir? It's 504-301-2363. That's 504-301-2363. Great. And you are the dispensary that services the uh, New Orleans area. But again, people don't have to be uh, in New Orleans to use that they can they can come to see you if if they would like right we're, okay. we're really with region one which we're officially the medical marijuana dispenser for region one which encompasses Orleans Parish Jefferson Parish Plaquemine and St. Bernard but like you said in Louisiana you can visit you can re receive your recommendation from any of the nine dispensaries state statewide very good. And I'm uh, Dr. Victor Chow. Thank you guys for tuning in. You're obviously tuning in on my uh, Facebook page, I think, or maybe uh, if you've been shared this, but my official website is chowmd.com. If you're interested in learning uh, more about me, my clinic, requesting a consultation, I encourage you to visit. So really the, the meat of what I wanted to talk with you today about Rustin really was, um, I guess you sort of um, took everyone by surprise, but in a good way, well, about a month ago, you dropped the prices of your medical marijuana products by a pretty significant amount. And so I guess I just wanted to give you a chance to sort of talk through, you know, why you decided to do that. Well, what happened is when we were administering medicine to the patients or really selling it to the patients, they, particip they participated in a program and we're getting fantastic results. But then we started checking back. And by the way, at H&W, we check back on, we follow your progress through the whole thing. Unlike most pharmacies, we're going to check with you. Like I said, we're going to stick with you the whole way and kind of babysit you and make sure you're achieving the optimum benefits you can with it. So but when we check in back with some of these patients, they're saying the product worked fantastic, but I couldn't afford it. So I'm like, Man, and then we start getting this same comment over and over and over from a bunch of people. They said well, they would love to keep on this medicine, but it was cost prohibited. So then we made just a conscious decision. We saying, hey, man, look, it's more important that these people participate in this program and achieve the benefits and get their lives back to that to the status they wanted to. So we did a 25 percent reduction on our cost. I mean, yeah. our price across the board. That was a pretty big um, reduction. I'm just going to put it matter of factly. And, you know, um, a lot of patients were 
are benefiting tremendously from that. I mean, you talk about patients that might be taking two or three bottles of medicine that even comparing with what you were charging before and what you're charging now, I mean, these are people that are saving more than a hundred dollars a month um, on, yeah. on that. So, um, you know, so either people that, you know, may have um, trouble taking their full dose may, they may be more easily able to do that. Right. Now. When we're getting, when cost becomes a, a factor, all of a sudden you're taking suboptimum levels of medication just to stretch it out. Yeah. So now you could at least have that comfort to know and say, look, the price is not as bad as it once was. Mm -hmm. And now I can use the full therapy and the full doses I'm supposed to. Instead of taking uh, a half a milliliter, it was taking a quarter of a milliliter. Instead right. of taking one milliliter, it was taking a half a milliliter. Just trying to stretch it out. So now the people can fully participate in the therapy that's, that's initiated by the doctor. And overall, what kind of... Um medical benefits were you seeing from from people taking this obviously you know there was something medically where you know it was prompting you to you know make this decision so so people could continue to to take it what stories were you hearing about the medical responses the medical responses were fantastic i mean the, the vast majority of our patients who come to us they were getting significant results we we're getting people who were on five and six opiates at one time they've reduced that significantly to like two or three or one, sometimes, I mean, even none at all. Uh, the kids who were able to get their medication and participate in school activities that way they couldn't before. The elderly patients who were homebound because they were in so much pain and discomfort or spasms or whatever, now they can do a whole bunch of things with their family. So those were some of the driving forces. And, and me as a pharmacist from, for over 30 years, we just couldn't sit by and just let people go without their medication. So we made a conscious decision to say, hey man, look, if we gotta take, if we gotta take a step back as far as business-wise so that these people could get their medication, we did it. I, th I think that was really, you know, a great on your part to always keep the patients front and center. I mean, really makes it feel worthwhile that you took the plunge into this, mm -hmm you know, thing that nobody really knew a whole lot about a couple of years ago, right? Well, that's like when we first chose to participate in a medical marijuana program. We knew we wanted to be the leader. We wanted to know it. We wanted to know, make sure that it was done correctly. And the choice we made to, to with this reduction was because we care about people. And we wanted always to be a caring program. Great, great. Um, so you were at the meeting with me today, and you know we, I do want to answer uh, Kathy's question about what we're hearing with the new methods of an administration. So I'm going to give you what I heard, Rustin. If you heard differently, I want to you know make sure that we we get you in there as well. So uh, GB basically said that the um, thin dissolving buccal strips. Um, which you would put under your tongue. It's similar, I suppose, to like a Listerine breast right. strip. They're developing that. They're working on that. They didn't actually give a timeline on that, nothing that I heard. Uh, and unfortunately, um, the truth is a lot of times, you know, the process, you know, from approval to delivery sometimes is pretty short. Like literally you may hear about a product being available like right after they get approval from the Department of Agriculture and Board of Pharmacy, you may not even hear about it beforehand. And then, you know, you literally could have it stocked up and available to patients, you know, pretty soon after that. Correct. If you know anything about, if you've been following the medical marijuana program in Louisiana, they don't like promising dates because there's a lot of delays. This is a new industry. So in an abundance of caution, sometimes they have to test up two and three times. They have to go through this SOPs and all that kind of stuff. So it's a new industry. And like I've always said, it's more important to get it right than get it fast. And I think GB also mentioned that they were looking at developing some topicals. Is that, did you hear that as right. well? I'm, I may be getting them confused, unfortunately, right, with right. the other vendor. No, no right. <laughs> they yeah, were, okay. They're both they're trying to come up with a, uh, a variety yeah. of products suit, suit, to suit your need. Yeah. Because you might have a need where it's a transdermal patch, it's where you can put it on once and you, it lasts you the whole day. There might be a need for a, a topical patch for certain mm -hmm. things. Uh, uh, a capsule that you could take once a day, and all that. so it's it's still a, this is still a 
an industry it's in its infancy yeah. so we have a lot more coming down the pipe but we're, we're, we're still new at this yeah and then from southern's end which is a lira i uh, heard a couple things so again there's no specific timeline um and what i did hear was they i think have three formulations that they're working on and i've heard rumors that they may have something that's fairly concentrated so right now as you guys know um let's say let's just take the thc rich for example from gb sciences that's 300 milligrams of thc in a 30 cc tincture so what i'm hearing from alir is that one of their products may be more concentrated than that which which would be nice you know that means as a patient you know you perhaps won't have to buy as many bottles or as you know rustin is you know when you can package something in bulk on a per milligram basis, right. it could end up being cheaper. So that's on the pipeline. And then I um, may have eavesdropped on a conversation where unfortunately, I think there's some problems with the um, inhaler option. That's what I sort of eavesdropped on, that there's some issues there. So again, that that I don't know you know, what, what's going on there, but that was specifically not mentioned um, at the um, latest update. Um, also, for any of you that follow politics, you know, the legislative session is about to start. And so, um, and so um, there's apparently 15 bills or something that have been filed uh, relative to changing some of the medical marijuana regulations. Right. And if any of them seem like they're going to happen, I'll let you know. Unfortunately, I'm not in the business, so political prognostication. I know you're not Rustin, you know, I prefer to stick, stick with my bread and butter, which Mine is medical. Too. And, Mine but if anything too. seems like it's going to happen, that's important, either positive or negative, we'll be sure to update. But right now there's just too many bills, you know, and many of them get amended and many of them, you know, don't pass, you know, before we, um, before we, um, we do that. Um, there was one interesting piece of news, um, uh, at the, meeting today and they basically presented that uh, over 5,000 patients in total through the whole state have participated in the medical marijuana program. Oh yeah, it yeah. Is, and it's growing. The more and more the word gets out that this is a viable type of therapy, it's nothing smokable, nothing's edible. You know, we just still got to, one of the biggest challenges we have just to get this word out because one of the things that hurts me a whole lot is that some people are still suffering needlessly because they think it's something that it's not. Yeah. They think it's, I got to roll up a joint and do all this, whatever, and all this stuff. It's like, no, this is a medical, this is a medication like any other medication. You put it under your tongue, it dissolves sublingually, it's called, so it's under your tongue, and you should receive the effects within 20 minutes. And I will tell you something, Rustin, you know, we were talking about, you know, how the program is growing and I will say one of the areas where it's growing is acceptance by the overall medical community. When I first started doing this, you know, I would have a lot of patients that would refer themselves. In fact, that was probably 75% of the patients I got were patients I just found about me through their friends or family or through my website or whatever. And they would come in that way. And when I asked them, you know, did they talk with their doctor or whatever, they'd be also, they'd be afraid you know, right, of what their right. doctor would say. And now I can sort of see the shift in the general medical community. In fact, now 75% of my patients actually come from other doctors. Right. You know, so to me, that that's a really, and, and, and also, you know, doctors that a few years ago were totally against their patients doing this. Mm -hmm. Now that they see patients with results are now actually some of the doctors that are sending the most patients to me. Um, and so to me, that that's one of the really things that I think is great for the long-term future of the program because it, it doesn't really do a patient any good. The overall medical community is not supportive because then, you know, you can't use it in your hospital or your nursing home, or you can't use it, you know, in a wide variety of situations. But if the general medical community accepts it, then, you know, you can use it in a wide variety of facilities, a wide variety of doctors will be accepting of it. You don't have to necessarily be worried about your doctor kicking you out of their clinic or something like right. that, which I think is really important. Right, you can't argue re results. The results, when you see a patient that, that walked in two months after they had to be rolled in, 
hey, you can't argue with that. You have a patient that had severe spasms that could hardly stand up straight, and now they're standing up erect, walking in like there's no problem. You can't argue with those things. Yeah. And more and more people, we just need to destigmatize this medication because we don't want the grandmother or the kid or somebody who can benefit from them to be sitting around saying, oh, I want to take this. This is a viable medical therapy for, for a variety of um, conditions. Yeah, and I think also one of the concerns is always, you know, with medical marijuana, people are afraid that, you know, people that um, don't really need it for medical reasons are going to get their hands on it and, you know, sell it on the yeah. street or abuse it. But you, you are in a position where you can see the prescription profiles of every single person that walks through your door. And um, I imagine that that is something that's hardly happening, if ever. Well, it, it, right, we hardly ever see it at all. The average patient we have is a 50-year-old male. Well, people think, oh, kids can be using it. The average per patient is a 50-year-old male uh, who's suffering and who wants to get his life back, who mm -hmm. wants to be able to partake in the things he used to take in before the time. You know, the, the grandmother who would love to go shopping with her daughter and her granddaughter, the kid who would love to go on the field trips with the rest of the class. You know, the person who just can't get a job because he's in so much pain or, or have Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease or autism or, or a lot of variety because there's there are 14 different conditions this medication is approved for. And if you look at our website, we list all 14 conditions on it. All right. Well, great. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you came in late or if you missed part of it or had to go work, <laughs> um, this will be posted on my Facebook page so you can watch the whole thing from beginning to end if you can't get enough of Rustin and me. Uh, I think that's like a comedy duo or something, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so anyway, yeah. Mr. Rustin Henry of H&W Dispensary, pleasure to have you on. And I'm Dr. Victor Chow with the Medical Marijuana Clinic of Louisiana. Rustin, one more time, just give people your address, your phone number, your website, you know, just so they can... Uh... Well, one thing about you can always give us a call. Unlike a lot of other places, we have a live voice that's answering every time. We don't want press one, press two, and all of that. Reason is, a lot of our patients are elderly population. We want them to feel as comfortable as possible. So when you call us, you're going to get a live voice. If we're open, you're going to get a live voice from them. So once again, we're located at 1667 Chapatulas Avenue in New Orleans. Zip code is 70111, no, 70130. Okay, our phone number is 504-301-2363, and our website is hwdispensary.com. That's hwdispensary.com. Many of your questions, you might have a little apprehension about medical marijuana. Go to the website. It can answer a lot of questions for you. And if it doesn't, feel free to give us a call. Even if you're not a patient, we'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Great. And thank you guys for tuning in uh, with me, Dr. Victor Chow. You're probably watching this on my official Facebook page, so thank you very much. I also have an official website, chowmd.com, C-H-O-U-M-D.com. I have some articles, videos, some information about my clinic. Should you desire to request a consultation, we'd love to have you come on in. So again, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll um, do this again uh, in a couple months. Thank you again. Thank you and have a good day.